Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. As many of you probably know, there's been some new masking features added to the latest version of Lightroom Classic, specifically Lightroom Classic version 12. In today's video, I want to talk about those masking features that pertain to portraiture. With these new masking features, you're able to edit individual features of a person independently of one another, meaning you could easily whiten a person's teeth and then easily soften their skin and so on. So in today's video, I'm going to show you everything I know about these new portrait masking features. We're going to be working on two different images. Uh, both of them haven't been edited out at all outside of cropping. This is a stock image that was shot horizontal and you can see I cropped it vertically but there's been no other editing done to it at all. So I'm ready I just want to jump right in and edit it as a portrait with these new portrait masking features and to get to them we just open up the masking tool and you can see down here where it says people it is detecting people and it will detect all the people in your image. In this case there's only one person and to verify that it in fact detected the person properly. You could just hover over this little thumbnail and you'll get a red overlay over the specific person it detected. In this case, again, it's just one person. Now, if you want to edit specific features, all you need to do is click on this little thumbnail and it will detect the person's features. And you can see that you have options for face skin. And if I hover over each of these, you'll get a preview of the overlay that it will be affecting when you do the adjustment. Body skin, eyebrows, eye sclera, that's the white part of the eye, iris and pupil, lips, teeth, and hair. So let's just start editing this portrait. Now I'm going to choose her face skin. You can see I could click that and that's there. I could do her body skin at the same time, just add a check mark there. In this case, I'm not going to do, I'm just going to edit the skin of her face. So I'll have that clicked, checked, We'll create the mask. Now, one nice thing about Lightroom Classic, it comes with some masking presets, and there are a few different masking presets for portraiture. Unfortunately, Adobe Camera Raw, though it has all these masking features, it doesn't have the masking presets. So if you are using Lightroom Classic, you could go to the right of where it says Effect, click that drop down, and we could go down. You could see there's two different presets for softened skin. Softened skin and softened skin light. Softened skin is usually too heavy, but I'll try that, at least too heavy for me. And you can see how it softened her skin, and you can see how it is very heavy. There's before and there's after. Now, the good thing is you could come in and readjust it. You could either go right to the two sliders, in this case, that it affected. It moved clarity to minus 100, and it put sharpness up to 25. Or at the top, there's an amount slider. In this case, because it's too heavy, I'll just move this to left and take some of this effect away. Move it to the right if you think it's not heavy enough. But we'll just make it look a little more realistic. Let's do a before after. There's before, there's after. I think that looks a little better. Now, I want to whiten her teeth. So what I need to do is add a mask for her teeth. So we'll go up to create new mask. We'll go down to select people. Again, there's only one person. So we'll click on this. And this time we're going to click on teeth and we'll create the mask for her teeth. Fortunately, there is a masking preset for her teeth. Click this drop down, and we'll go to teeth whitening, and bam, it whitened her teeth. So there's before, and there's after. So we're coming along, let's create a new mask. Again, it's going to be a people mask. We'll click on our person, and this time let's do her eye sclera. Oh no, let's do her iris and pupil, I'm sorry. We'll create the mask there. Again, we're lucky we have a drop down uh, with a, a mask preset. We'll go to Iris Enhance. And that one didn't do as much. Sometimes with brown eyes, they're a little dark. So we could come in and just boost up exposure a little bit. So I think that looks pretty decent. So that gives you an idea what you could do. Now, I'm going to actually do one more. Let's brighten her hair and then we'll go on to the next image. So I'm going to create a new mask and we'll select people, click on our person. Let's go to hair, create the mask. I mentioned I want to brighten it. I just want to make her, her hair lighter. Move that to the right. So pretty cool, right? So let's close down masking. Let's go to the next uh, image. This 
has two people in it. And again, there's no editing done to it at all, but I did crop it because when I took this photo, for some, I didn't center them very well. So my crop is basically to have them more centered and it's a four by five, eight by 10 crop. And I'm just going to jump right to the masking and you can see that it's detecting people. And now because there's more than one person here, it'll detect both the people and you could hover over the little thumbnails to make sure it did it properly. There's my son, Anthony. And there is his wife, Christy, both detected independently of one another. So let's start with Anthony. We'll click on him. It's going to detect his features. Let's go to his skin, face skin. Let's add his body skin in there too, maybe. We'll add that too. You can see how it's got his arm and his neck. So we'll add that as well. So we have his face and his neck. We'll create the mask. Let's go to our drop down and let's do soften skin light. Okay. Yeah, not too bad. Now let's go and whiten his teeth. So we're going to create a new mask. We're going to select people. We're going to click on him and we're going to go to teeth. We'll create the mask and we'll use our drop down to get the mask preset for teeth whitening. Not bad. All right. Now his eyes, he always squints when he smiles. I can barely see his eyes, but let's select people. Him again. And let's go to his iris and pupil and create the mask and go to our drop down and go to iris enhance. That didn't do so much. Let's brighten his eyes a little bit. Be too much. Doesn't look right, but that's all right. Now let's uh, work on the second person in the image, his, his wife, Christy. We'll click there and we'll go to select people. We'll select our second person. Let's uh, soften our skin. Let's do our body skin as well. We'll click create. And then we'll go to our drop down. Now you don't have to use the drop down. You could just come in and start moving sliders, you know, you know, whatever you want to do. But in this case, because we do have a masking preset for skin softening, in this case, skin soften, soften skin light, we'll do that. Right. And then we'll add a new mask. You might as well use the presets. Um, it will save you some time if the preset is what you need. Um, let's go to select people again. Click on her again. And this time let's go to teeth. Create the mask. Go to our drop down and go down to teeth whitening. And finally, let's do one for her eyes as well. We'll create the mask. We'll go to people. Click on her again and go to iris and pupil, create the mask. And I'm not even going to bother with the drop down because the uh, masking preset for iris and pupil just doesn't work as well. It just doesn't seem to be as good. So we'll brighten it up a little bit and we'll add some saturation to her eye. So you see how quickly I did that. There's before and there's after. Let's get that off there. There's before and there's after. You could very easily edit portraits in Lightroom Classic. Now the question I'll probably get is how does this compare to maybe Portrait Pro or maybe Luminar or On One Photo Raw? It's not nowhere near as good as those. Um, with those applications, for example, when you soften skin, you're able to use um, a better technology for skin softening. In most cases, it's frequency separation, which is a superior method for softening skin or for just working with skin. The thing with Lightroom, it really just uses the clarity slider, so it kind of blurs the skin, so it isn't as good as those apps. Additionally, there's nothing in Lightroom uh, to affect a person's like dark rings or bags under their eyes. You can see there's some bags here. There's nothing here specifically for that. Now, you could try to use, let's say, one of the... Um, healing brush tools here to try to do it, but it's very, very difficult uh, to do that. Also in those apps, there's just more to them. You could like whiten a person's face, your entire face. Now you could, you know, go to the mask, let's say, let's add a new mask and you could go to people and let's say go to Anthony and you could maybe use like his face skin, but it won't look right because it will make his skin brighter but it won't, let's say, his, his hair on his face, the beard, it won't really brighten that. So it doesn't look right. So for this, if you need to brighten a person's face, which I would probably brighten their faces in this image, 
what I would do is create a new mask and use a brush. And then with the brush, make sure the brush is the right size. You can, I'm just dragging my finger on my magic mouse. Or you could use the bracket keys, left bracket key smaller, right bracket key larger. Or you could use the slider over here. But anyway, use the brush. And you can see as I paint on his face, the overlay comes. And I'm purposely trying to avoid like his hair and stuff. Didn't do that great of a job. But then I would come in with exposure and just brighten it up a little bit. It really does a lot to a portrait. Now I would do them individually. Um, the, so I'll create a new mask, go to brush, and this time I'll do Christie's face. And again, I want to avoid her hair, avoid his shirt. So I'll come in, try to do the best job I can. I really don't want to get like her neck or his neck or anything like that. And then come in and brighten her face a little bit. Now, unfortunately, as I mentioned, uh, you have to do that kind of manually in Lightroom. Whereas with those other apps, and I'm talking like Portrait Pro and all those apps that are specific for portraiture, uh, there's others beside Portrait Pro. The names aren't just coming to my mind at the moment. And there is, of course, Luminar Neo and Luminar AI. And then there's On One Photo Raw, probably from On One Photo Raw 21 up, up to the current version, On One Photo Raw 2023. There are specific portrait um, adjustments that you could do where it automatically detects the features just like Lightroom did. And you could do all the different iris enhance, softened skin, but the softened skin is frequency separation, which is much better than just kind of blurring. And you could do other things too, like bright person's face and things like that. So Lightroom isn't as good as those, but in my opinion, for most applications, it's good enough. There's really probably, you know, most of us that use Lightroom aren't doing advertising campaigns where we're you know, advertising, you know, diamond rings and things like that. You need to have um, frequency separation done to the skin and, and whatnot. But so with that in mind, I think Lightroom is good enough. You just have to be careful with any application that you don't overdo it. In this case, I definitely overdid like their teeth here and stuff like that. But for demonstration purposes, you could see your teeth are very unnaturally white. Um, but for demonstration purposes, I think you get the idea of what I did here. One thing I want to show you real quick, though, on this image as I'm looking at it. Look, how, remember I brightened her hair? Let me go back to the mask and find that specific mask. It's this one. Let's make that mask active again. What you could see is, see her part? The mask wasn't sophisticated enough to not include the skin of her scalp where the part is. And you can see how it made that white it doesn't look right so what we need to do is subtract from this mask so you click subtract and you're probably going to want to use a brush and then come in and get a brush that kind of will allow you to brush right in this area here to subtract this from the mask so it looks more natural so good thing i saw that because you may not know that you can subtract and add to these masks once you apply the mask in this case the hair mask in this case, I wanted to subtract from it. Click the subtract button and then choose whether you want to subtract with what tool, in this case, a brush. If you want to add to it, let's say it missed part of her hair, you could add to it as well. You could do that with all the masks. So that's important. I'm glad I caught that so I could show you right at the end of this video. So that's it for this video, a deep dive into Lightroom Classics new masking. I hope that helps you better utilize this tool on your images. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.